Think about the scenarios when you might need to send an email from your web app. Sending a welcome email, creating a new user account, forgotten password email. Sending all of these email in a reliable and professional looking way requires the proper setup. So whatever you do, don't do what I did for my first website, which was to use the wrong tool for the job so people didn't always receive the emails and I had a lot of unnecessary configuration that was a pain to maintain. I'm working on a new web app right now and I'm taking a completely different approach to sending emails so that I can send emails using one simple API call and wherever my website is deployed, the email will always come from the right domain, giving the emails that professional look that users will trust. In this video, I'm gonna break down the mistake I made and how I'm fixing it using this really cool new service so you can make sure you get your email set up correctly for your next web app. Have you ever noticed that some emails have an unsubscribe button at the bottom and some emails don't? The distinction is that you can unsubscribe from marketing emails because you might not want these, but the other emails like sign up information or a receipt for a purchase always get sent to you. And these are called transactional emails. They happen as a result of some kind of transaction that you do on a website. Now in terms of marketing emails, there are some well-known services. You might have heard of MailChimp or MailAlive and the problem with my first website, tomgregory.com, is that I decided to use one of these marketing platforms to send all of my emails. The two main problems with this is that if somebody decided to unsubscribe from my marketing emails, if they decided to purchase something from my website, they wouldn't receive the welcome email because they were unsubscribed. The second problem was that I had a lot of code like this to call out to these third parties. And then now I'd have to log into that other website like Mailer Lite to configure the actual email. That's a lot of unnecessary work, especially for someone like me who ideally wants everything to be configured in one single template. Well, for my latest web app, I've discovered a new email service, one that's trusted by Amazon, Netflix, and Reddit to send emails reliably through a simple API. If you've ever used a third-party email service like Mailgun or Mailchimp, you're probably familiar with the monthly subscription plan. But what if your website doesn't get that much traffic and you don't need to send that many emails? Seems a bit crazy to spend $15 a month to send 100 emails, which is why I really like AWS SES, which is a pay-per-use email service. This simple email service is another service you deploy into AWS, just like an S3 bucket or an AWS Lambda function and it integrates nicely with any existing services you have. But the reason I'm loving SES so much right now is that I don't just want to deploy one web app with one email domain. I want to make it as easy as possible to deploy web app after web app and using SES, I can very easily have a tom at whateverdomain.com all configured in a YAML template. If this sounds a bit high level so far, let's break this down into the three things you need to get started with SES for your web app. Do you already have an AWS account? If you do and you go to SES in the AWS console, you'll see by default you're in this sandbox mode. In this mode, you can only send emails to verified email addresses as a way for AWS to prevent spammers. Step one is to apply to get out of this sandbox so that you can send an email to any address on the internet. Step two is to verify that you're the owner of a domain so that you can start sending emails from that address or receiving emails to that address. For example, I've just set up a support at demo.devlaunchpad to receive emails and I'm sending emails from no reply at demo.devlaunchpad. The way you set this up is to create in AWS something called an SES identity. When you do that, it will validate your domain. So going forward, it trusts that you're the person that's able to send emails using that domain. Step three is to start using the SES send email API in whatever point of your application makes sense to send send a transactional email. For example, my setup is using SES to automatically email the user whenever they purchase with their email address and password so they can log in. And I've also set up a little function so that whenever anyone emails the support email address, it automatically forwards to my personal email. And the cool thing about defining all this in a YAML template like I am, is that you can extract things like the domain name into a property so that whenever you need to deploy a new web app, you just tweak that, deploy, 
deploy and you're good to go. Now I'm going to be sharing my template in a few weeks time once I've added a few more features. But in the meantime, if you're building a web app, think about what types of emails you need to send and whether that's transactional or marketing emails, try to pick the right tool for the job. That way you can set up a simple system that's low cost and easy to maintain as you add new features to your web app. See you in the next one.